Lovers by Huang Hai Su. Phoenix couldn't figure out why Jake refused to eat her hometown stinky tofu. After all, she'd gone out of the way to eat his moldy, milky, chunky blue cheese. <laughs> they from one house, she said. Oh, smelly, oh, blue she said as she put them into the fridge, making sure that he heard the fridge door shut. Jake said, no, again in the living room, and insisted that she take it out. It'll stink up everything. Then where I put, she said, and rested the tofu inside, making sure once again that he heard the fridge door shut. A year ago, Jake had proposed to Phoenix on her 25th birthday with a two-carat diamond ring from Chow Tai Fook, <laughs> the biggest jewelry store in Pulan, yeah, on the outskirts of Thalia. All of her seized up, including the lady owner, of the Happy Feet Massage Parlor turned green with envy, yet were suspicious. Why would Jake, a fat and limp foreign man, ask a young Chinese girl, massage girl, 20 years younger than him, to marry him? And why would she agree to marry him? Jake was not the only white guy who had ever gone to the massage parlor. In fact, in recent years, multinational companies had gradually populated the area, building factories and creating new businesses like theirs. Uh, villas were, were built overnight, and, you know, bars and western restaurants like this burgeoned like mushrooms in the rain. But he was among the few who visited regularly, like it was his ritual every week to have his body pressed and rubbed. After trying foot massages by several different masseuses in the house, Jake was sold on Phoenix on his very first massage. She talked only with her fingers, which tapped on his feet with the right amount of force. Her sensitive digits, she knew when to stop and be gentle, and when to be aggressive, but not hurt. Jake saw a slim figure with a studious face in the dim light, half of which was overshadowed by her loose and flowing hair. He was surprised that, unlike the other masseuses, she shared no chatter with him. How much money you make? Are you looking for Chinese girls some fun time, not time for? <laughs> Bad luck massage with you, with the fist feet, big feet. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix was calm and, and soothing, enabling him to feel the same way. After his promotion, Jake requested a whole body with Phoenix. His massage buddies from work had told him that a oh, full body massage would be moved to a private room upstairs. Phoenix led him there. Okay, come on. She said with a few English words she knew. He glanced at her while she was setting up the bed. She was about his shoulder height, tall by Chinese standards. When, he sub when she subconsciously put her free hair behind her ears, 
she saw the side of her face that he had not seen clearly upstairs. There was a two-inch scar. Jake wanted to know what had happened, but instead he asked, where are you from? Phoenix looked up, shyly smiled, and, sh and shook her head. Then he switched to his humble Chinese. Uh, uh, ni duo da. <laughs> he fell awkward asking a young girl's age, but he'd been told in his cultural training class, it's all right to do so, just break the ice. <laughs> As if she were listening to an alien, <coughs> Phoenix shook her head again and pointed him towards the bed. Time to lie down and the work done. <laughs> Jake practiced more on his Chinese pronunciation after that day, while Phoenix surprised him from time to time with a more English word. The two steadily communicated during their sessions with scraps of what they could pull together, syllables that were missing, and body language that helped to express meaning. Jake showed her his children's photos, explaining that he was divorced. His kids were grown now and living on their own. He said he was from a ranch from Texas where he rode horses in his younger years. He shared his photo in cowboy gear sitting on a handsome white horse taken before he had injured his hips. On a moon festival night, Phoenix shared her story. She had met a man from Shandong and married him against her parents' will. She followed him to their promised sweet homeland in Qingdao where he carved her face with his knife, and then he brutally raped her. He believed she was flirting with some man in the neighborhood. She escaped to her home in Pulandian, only to find that her parents, they'd stopped farming in the plot of land that was now a half-completed high-rise. They had fallen ill during the fight to save the land into which they had poured their energy for so long. Faith, she said. Why I'm part of Phoenix sighed towards the sky as if she could pick up the stark contrast of the emptiness that she felt and the fullness of the moon above. Jake asked her out that night. The two lonely souls talked and walked until months' mouths were parched and feet were scorched. They had to stop rejuvenated from each other's warmth and strength. But Phoenix said no when Jake proposed. We lack in no love. Put this on, Jake said, holding out the ring, until it's love. <laughs> After they argued about her chow tao fu and his blu tiesu, Phoenix brought another of her blue food favorites, century eggs, as if to fight this stinky war to its final end. <laughs> In front of Jake, she undressed one egg coated with clay and rice hulls. Little by little, the naked egg emerged to the surface, gray dotted with dark blue spots. Inside, the egg white was dark brown, marked with crystal patterns. She placed the fragile egg on a white porcelain plate. Using a sewing thread, she held tightly in her hands to cut it into halves. The egg 
open. The sight of the bluish, sticky liquid inside the dark navy egg yolk, Jay groaned and walked away as if in an emergency called him. After he'd completely left the kitchen, he yelled to the heavens, All right, you won, my dear! Phoenix did not respond or make a sound. When Jake returned to the kitchen, she had already been inundated with tears. She fought against his hug. How do people good if not see a food? Jake took a walk that day, looking for a solution. He entered an electrical shop to see two small ice boxes that would embrace their smelly treasures separately. Thank you.